Welcome back to theCUBE. This is, I'm John MacArthur, President of Walden Technology Partners. I'm here as part of the Wikibon team. I'm also here with David Floyer, who's co-founder of uh, <coughs> Wikibon, and we are broadcasting live on SiliconANGLE TV at IBM Edge 2012. I'm here today with Roger Osmond. Roger is the president and I think founder, right? Co-founder. Co-founder of, co -founder. Co -founder of yeah. Sentia, uh, an IBM partner. So welcome on theCUBE. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on. You came down here with a couple of customers. Yeah, there's uh, several of us from Sentia down from Canada and we're here with two of our customers. Okay, and tell me why they came. Well, we have uh, one of them is a CIO at an organization. Another one is a, a senior IT director, and uh, both of which, well, actually one of which is uh, is a, a good IBM um, storage customer of ours. The other one is is not today an IBM storage customer. So okay, the, let's talk about the one who's not a customer. I want to hear uh, what were the surprises for them. Was there anything that they? It, what, what has this made a difference for their in their perspective? Oh, abs absolutely, absolutely. So uh, this particular customer has uh, has been an HP and a NetApp customer for some time. Uh, we're expecting a, <coughs> a, 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 a um, an initiative to happen later this year. So they're open eyes now to different technologies that are available to them, and uh, we've been spending a bit of time with them back up in Canada, uh, filling them in on the uh, on some of the advancements that IBM has made. Um, in, in their storage portfolio. So we're down here to can just learn a little bit more about it, um, get the position or, or hear from other customers in the little customer reference testimonial sessions uh, that have been going on for them to appreciate um, you know, more of what the portfolio can offer. Mm -hmm. The biggest problems that they're trying to solve today are what? Well, so I'd say their problems are like m the problems we see with most of our customers. And it's really one of of uh, manageability of their storage subsystems, how data is is really growing out of control. Um, so they're looking for ways to have a more optimized way of, of managing their managing their data and their storage, to uh, <coughs> to to uh, allow their IT support staff to be more proactive in in in, uh, in other projects they want to do, and not just simply reactive to day to day um, you know storage. Uh, storage management issues. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us a little bit more about Centura? What are you, what's your customer base? Where are you based uh, sure. in Canada? No, I'd be delighted to, yeah. So Sentia Solutions is uh, headquartered in uh, Richmond Hill. We're a sort of a suburb of Toronto. Uh, we're an IBM premier business partner and uh, one of the storage specialty elite partners. Actually, we were uh, delighted yesterday to receive one of the winning edge awards or the, the partner award for Canada, which is a uh, which was a great honor to receive. Congratulations! Um, we're uh, we're only about four years old, um, but a lot a lot of the folks on, on board bring a wealth of of, uh, of past experiences to the table. Uh, we really work within the IT communities of uh, or IT community uh, kind of cross industry, working with CIOs and IT directors, IT managers on addressing the challenges that they face. Um, so a lot could of you could you be a little bit more explicit? Could you pull out a, maybe a, a case study recently of something you've done, where uh, where you know what were the particular problems that that, that faced you in, in take one particular customer for example? Sure. Uh, what what were the detailed issues that you got down to? Well, let's see. If I, I think of you know one particular situation that just happened sort of later last year, a, a customer had a number of of older storage subsystems, so things, you know, we do server storage virtualization, at, but I guess because we're here at Edge, let's, let's talk more specifically to storage. No, no, no. We talk about anything. Talk about anything. Oh, okay, anything. okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, yes, yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely, yes. okay, so in, um, let's, uh, let's uh, make it make it real. <laughs> for sure, okay, no, absolutely, then, so in fact, in this case, it was a nice, nice blend of everything. We had a customer who had taken some baby steps into server virtualization, so they were, uh, had started uh, just er early stages of some VMware virtualization right. of their servers, right. um, but there was a concern or a requirement to uh, perhaps have a more available environment. Uh, so we were able to work with them um, to deploy, uh, firstly, some, some more advanced virtualization. So in my view, private cloud is really an advanced stage of virtualization. Sure. So we, hmm. so we f fully fully virtualized their server environment, but then we used the IBM uh, V7000 to virtualize the storage environment that supported uh, those servers. Uh, the V7000 also virtualized some existing storage they already had, so again, it was the reuse of that technology 
you know, con uh, continuing uh, to benefit from the investment they had previously made. So they're actually managing that storage behind the SVC that's in the V7000. So yeah, the v yeah, SVC and the V7000 manage not only its own disk, but the but old storage but the as old well. Storage as well. Right. So yeah. the return on assets already there it's, increased. It's, exactly. Yeah. And but then to further enhance that whole solution, we uh, created a second site solution. So and going to very similar setup in, in the remote site, and again, in this case, it was using uh, VMware Site Recovery Manager. We have a fully highly available environment such that um, server and storage could fail over from site to site should there be ever a need to do so. Yeah, right. this is one of the debates that you talk about SVC, and this is one of the debates that we have around what's the use case for SVC. And you know, I was talking to an SE last night, and he says, Well, and I went through some of the use cases, he says it's all of them, but I'm curious as this particular customer, because you say he's managing non-IBM storage behind the SVC, yeah. um, is is this a temporary migration strategy? We're going to move them off. Or are they really going to preserve and keep the storage around a lot longer than they would have otherwise? Well, it's actually in this case, it's a it's a bit of both. So okay. we we actually use the SVC capabilities of the, of the V7000 to do a migration of data from some of their very old disk that they needed to needed to phase out anyway. Um, okay, so they moved some stuff, so they, moved they retired some stuff, some stuff. But then they also had some other uh, other assets that were not that old and still had a, you know, a several year useful life left in them. Yeah. And uh, so that remains behind at SVC. So what they put behind it besides IBM storage? They put HP or yeah, in this case it was there was an older uh, HP box and an older and and, a, and an EMC box as well. Okay, so it's old Clarion or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're ma they're actually managing it. All of the functions are the stuff that they still have to use, do through the the management interface for no. EMC or is 100% managed through SVC. Yeah, in this case, once we allocated all of the storage to the uh, to the SVC or the V7000, yep. it's now completely managed by the V7000. So all of those management apps that I would have had to have had from HP and from EMC, I turned those off. And I just yeah, I absolutely, turn them off. Okay. And you can actually even enhance the uh, the value of those old, old boxes through the easy tiering. If you're familiar with that, uh, sure. Where we have yeah. some SSD, some solid state disk in the in the V7000, and it actually is. Uh, you know, it, it's now taking some of the, the hotter data off of that off external of that. disk. So, so even so that. So it's, it's tearing across you know, multiple across, arrays. Across uh, multiple arrays, yeah. yeah from that's the, a very nice. Uh, yeah, which, which, it, which is great. Um, yeah. So we've had uh, <clears throat> great success. Uh, I mean, the V7000 tremendous box. So, so from a business case, did, did you did you look at the business case with them? Do you develop the business case with? Oh, absolutely, with them? yes. So, can you talk about that? What what were the things that mattered to them, and what saved them money, or what were the the, the, the really important line sure. items? Sure. Well, I mean, some of the ones we've already just chatted about was this whole integration of old with new, um, data migration. Uh, that, from a business casing point of view, you know, that can be done. I wouldn't say trivially, but that's a very uh, straightforward task with the V7000. So from a business case point of view, that using the V7000 to accomplish this you know, saves you know, man weeks, man months of time, effort, uh, and risk uh, in doing that. So that was one of the, that is one of the cases. Um, the, the other case, again, is using the easy tiering, being able to have a, a, a large amount of you know, very cost-effective disk underneath a very small amount of SSDs allowed us to provide, um, at a very reasonable price, uh, very high performance without yep. needing um, you know, very you high do. performing disk that, that yeah. you would in most other right. systems. Mm -hmm. right. So you could, you could balance that out. Yeah, so, yeah. so that truly had a dollar, a dollar savings to it. Right. Yeah, were, there, were there software licenses that they could turn off? I know that you, uh, SVC will provide multi-pathing and, right? Uh, yep. And, and so, some of, some of the vendors uh, charge extra for multi-pathing and they charge on the whole box basis. Was that part of the savings or not? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so that some of the multi-pathing software back to the, back to the servers are all, all included. There's an awful lot included in the SVC. There are, I mean, in the V7000, you can turn on a couple of extra features, but for the most part, you know, what you get out of the box is really all you need to, all you need to, to, to run everything, um, which for other vendors is often, um, you know, as you, multiple add-on layers of, of software and 
keys and things along those lines. So uh, it, always things are competitive. Um, in this particular case, uh, what, what were the alternatives that they were looking at? Um, well, pretty much them all. All I mean, of them? Yeah, in yeah. this case. Uh, well, because they'd had... What, what, what were the things about the particular solution you put forward you think made the difference? Uh, well, the other thing we haven't talked about was uh, is, is the is the manageability interface, in this case for the V7000. Big uh, improvements in that area, right? I remember when I first saw SVC, it was all command line and it was pretty... <laughs> Pretty right. grim, wasn't it? Pretty <laughs> raw. It, pretty raw. Yeah, you need you know the PhD to uh, kind of really <laughs> operate it. But but no, we, now it's taken that easy, gooey feel of the XIV, and it's been moved to the V7000. So in a business case, when well, really when the, the the big objective is to reduce the ongoing manageability time and effort, it's that interface that makes a, a big difference. So we often find. When we're talking to customers, we have a very extensive demonstration lab in our facility, okay. and we find that um, showing, you know, this in this case, showing it is so critically important because then they, then a, then an, an organization can be taken through an exercise of how to allocate disk, how to grow, how to shrink, how to you know do these sort of things, and then they can really realize by seeing that it's it's a three click, excuse me, a three click process or something along those lines, as opposed to you know, what, could, what can take a considerably longer um, otherwise. Any reactions from your customers on the inline dedupe? Inline compression. Inline in, compression, in, I'm sorry. Inline in compression. compression. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so I, on the V7000, yes. I mean, we've had, uh, again, customers being able to take advantage of that um, uh, in the existing form, which is, you know, that, that, uh, that separate box that can be put in front of a, of, of a filer. Um, I see the... Um, the compression capability now on the V7000 is being a, tr a tremendous strength. Um, and uh, there's some, certainly some excitement here from the customers we have down on that. And when you see the use cases that are suggesting you can kind of get the equivalent of three times the storage um, by just turning on um, compression, I think that's, I think we're going to see a, a lot of uptake on that particular capability. Yeah, you still need the same number of IOs, don't you, to a large extent. That's oh, the IOs good. won't yeah. change. So yeah. that, that what might have needed uh, X number 10 of terabytes yes. in the background yeah. or 30 terabytes now really only requires a third of that of, of, of actual disk. disk and, and the way IBM's done it, um, you know, there's actually performance improvements that you can gain as opposed to uh, you know, a costly uh, IO overhead that is that is how we see it deployed in, in other organizations or through through other other vendors. Yeah. Other things that you're looking for IBM to do. So what do you want them to achieve over the next uh, uh, 12 months to make your life easier? Well, I think I mean we see um, uh, I think we see more functionality coming to the V7000, a little more um, combination of the new unified box where we're taking uh, you know now we have. Uh, <clears throat> file serving capability to, and I think, in, as we see that enhancing more, and as we see the capability inherent in our um, block serving V7000, and as we see that extending into the file serving side of it as well, um, really rounding it out, I think that would be that'll be great. And, and I know those changes are are in plan over over time. So it's a true unified box. As so it becomes to, truly yeah, unified, yeah. and you know it has and has all of the functionality that that um, that, that, you need, that you need that you need for that's, a file for a file. That's right. And, that, that yeah. today, we, you know, we may not have yeah. hundred all, all percent the of it. And all the, you know, all I think really, yeah. I really think most of it's there already. Yeah. But the extra few bits and pieces still to come, I think, will be will be, you know, will really round it out nicely. Mm. And, and consistent management across the two as well. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean that's a, it's a, that's a strong platform. Um, uh, the XIV on the storage side is great, and actually, Peer Systems, uh, you know, the Peer Flex and the, the Peer Systems, I think, is a really exciting uh, announcement from IBM as we have. Have got any early uh, um, Adopter, adopters? Adopters uh, of that? Well, any? we have we have some early interest certainly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We actually will be bringing. We are a, a business partner innovation center, so we have a again the demo lab I talked about. We'll be ordering in uh, one of those as well. I think that whole converged, that whole converged approach. I think uh, you know, to a to, to a large degree, is the way of the future. Um, and I think to have that that single point of management uh, through the Flex System Manager, where it all comes together, I think will be. Uh, 
you know. Does that does that in some way threaten? I mean, I mean it, it takes away a lot of the things you used to do, doesn't it? Your added value, and it just comes in and it's pretty automatic. It just kind of works. It kind of well, works. Just, it kind yes. of works. Yeah. It, so that that's one way of looking at it. I think. I, I, though, but, but I. Th- yeah. But I think what it does, um, the same way it will allow a customer to be free up their time to be more proactive doing other things. I think it really allows us as value added resellers to kind of be spending more time with our customers in other areas. Oh, you right. know, so what are the right. areas where you want to spend more time with your customers? Where, where, what are the other problems that they're trying to solve that where you think you could add value? Well, I think the, the, the other big one is, is the whole explosion of data and how that relates to backup recovery, restore, um, availability, business, uh, business continuity. So things like uh, multi-site solutions. Um, Do you add? Can you add value by having your own multi-site or you know, being a, a backup? Uh, we ha- we do have we recovery. do have a data center at yeah. Centia, so you know that is an offering that we we do have out there uh, doing to, that, to yeah. be selected mm-hmm. set second site. Um, so whether we're doing that to set up within our with our within our shop or at a, a customer second location, I see that being. Um, the, the, well, that's always already largely deployed, but I think peer systems will allow you know an easier an easier way for other fo- uh, you know other organizations to move into that if they're not already there. I've talked to a number of, of uh, value added resellers who are trying to migrate their business from you know, product uh, sales and, and and services to more of a recurring revenue model. Mm-hmm. Are you are you sort of going along that line as well? Well, absolutely. I mean, we we have a number of contracts with organizations where we are actually out. They have actually outsourced either some or all of their IT management functions to us. What functions are they looking to outsource? Well, one that we particularly are strong on is uh, is is the outsourced backup and recovery right. management. Uh, we're a strong partner of IBM in the Tivoli Storage Manager mm-hmm. TSM product um, for for backup, recovery, and restore. So we we are you know we are actively um, managing that for many of our customers. Um, we also manage uh, a number of our uh, AIX or Unix Unix environments as well. Um, and and whether if it's not day in day out management there's a lot of the regular recurring kind of health check types of services where you know a regular a regular quick visit uh, you know online to a customer will will on, on a weekly or monthly or perhaps quarterly basis depending on the customer will you know a services revenue for us but it also is that peace of mind that insurance to the to, right. the, to the customer right. that we we're able to catch uh, trends before they become, uh, you know, Disasters. problems. What, what, are, what are the kinds of things that you find um, that you find that customers aren't doing as well for themselves as they ought to be, and you know, what are the easy catches for you? Well, I think again, you know, it probably is just what we were talking about, just sort of, just sort of some of the ongoing management. You know, we actually come to, we, you know, we'll, we'll come to a customer for the first time and realize that they have some pretty serious, potentially pretty serious issues with their with their setups, and you know. The information is, is well described in the logs that are capturing this information, but they've just been so busy, not that they've not had even chance to open up some of these logs to understand mm. what those issues are. So, um, uh, is that a potential added service of taking the logs from a lot of your customers and combining those and being able to analyze those? Um, yeah, yeah, we, we we have some tools. Um, you know, we have some tools that we use that will will you know combine a lot of that log information so that. So that for us, doing this for customer, we can do this very, very uh, time efficiently. So that we're, you know, we're the one uh, again with all the yeah, all of this information is, is being amalgamated into our into our systems, and and we're seeing the, you know, the green, yellow, red, uh, you know, indicators. Uh, whereas that may not be a, a capability that the customer has for themselves. Um, but that's because we've invested in in in, uh, you know, invested in in this in the skills, uh, in the skills and, the, and yeah. the tools to be able yeah. to do this. Right. Roger, we really appreciate you uh, coming on with us today. Tell us a little bit about uh, your company and uh, the problems that you're solving. Uh, I'm John MacArthur here with uh, David Floyer on uh, at Edge at IBM Storage Edge 2012 uh, on SiliconANGLE TV. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with our next guest.